Hello, I'm Derek Matthews, and welcome to Anne Arundel County, Anne Arundel United Real Talk. In this episode, we'll get an update on a few Anne Arundel United activities and events around town, but first, making headlines in the past week. What an incredible past couple of weeks of activities here in Anne Arundel County. There were our kids who went back to school, and all those routines of going back to school have begun. We have to also mention that we dodged a major bullet with Hurricane Florence turning south on us and heading the other direction. Our hearts go out to the people that it did affect. Also this past weekend, we had our annual emergency expo day up at Marley Station where nearly a couple thousand people actually showed up. Kudos to our emergency management team. We also had a forum on mental health with a great panel of experts that I had the opportunity to moderate. We're also making great progress still on our Thriving Communities Initiative centered around youth gun violence in the city of Annapolis. Also this past week, I had an opportunity to sit down a second time with a group of young men who had previously met with the county executive. This small group of African American males living here in the county came back to sit down and receive a brief out from me on some things that we're working on that are impacting the youth and the city of Annapolis and the discussion was able to counter things, discuss things like education, economics, mental health, housing, jobs, and many other topics. We actually closed the conversation with them being, uh, a council being put together now of like-minded young leaders who want to provide insight to the county executive and the community on related topics. They have all now walked out of that room and each one took on a uh, basically a leadership role on driving some projects that will let them be in the driver's seat to see how things start and how we can drive things to a finish. I'm also excited to be one of the new students in our Leadership Anne Arundel program for the flagship class of 2019. I'm really excited about this program. We have an amazing class and I'm looking forward to bonding monthly with a group of like-minded thinkers. We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, I'm going to be here with Dr. Deatra Denny, the diversity officer, chief diversity officer at Anne Arundel Community College. Let's take a look at our community calendar for events happening around town near you. We'll be right back. Today I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. It's really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. And welcome back. We are here with Dr. Denny, who is the Chief Diversity Officer at Anne Arundel County Community College. All right, Dr. Denny, it is really good to have you on today. Thank you very and, much. And uh, let's dive into it. Let's go right to some real talk. All right. So tell me a little bit about who you are. I mean, who is Dr. Deidre Denny? Tell me a little bit about where you're from, where you went to school. Okay, very good. So um, I'm new to Maryland. Okay. I've been here to be a year this week. Okay. Probably well, welcome I think to Maryland. a year tomorrow. Actually. And you picked Anne Arundel County. I we appreciate Anne that. Picked Anne Arundel County. Appreciate yes. that. Um, picked Anne Arundel County because of the opportunity at the college okay. at AACC. Okay. Um, before I moved here, I was in Savannah, Georgia, okay. Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, grew up in Louisville, Kentucky, so go wow. Cards. Wow, and you said it. You say it again, Louisville. It's Louisville. 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 So we yep. people say Louisville. Everybody says yeah, Louisville, yeah, but it's Louisville, yeah. okay. Louisville. <laughs> if you're okay. from there. Okay. okay. Um, and um, let's see, what else? And I was born, actually, I was born in Illinois. Okay. So okay. I kind of... I'm a wanderer, if you will. I got you. And have okay. different experiences. But an educated wanderer. But an educated you don't get that wanderer. doctor by chance. That is true. That and is I think true. you have a son, right? I have two sons. Okay. Yep. What's their One, names? Let's um, shout them out. 
Dion Xavier. Hey, right. baby. <laughs> He's 26. Okay. He's a biochemist. Okay. He lives in South Bend, Indiana. Okay. And currently cohabitating in my parents' basement. They fitted out a nice little apartment down okay. there. Grandparents like, are good for that, Oh my right? gosh. I was like, Dion, dude, seriously, uh, when I was coming up, your uh, grandparents were like booting me out the right, door. Right, right, They're right, like, go, right. take your stuff. And then my youngest, okay. Noah, Noah, he is in um, college in Alabama. Okay. And he is getting married in November. Okay. Woo -woo. Hey, Taylor. I'll, That's going to be my new daughter-in-law. Okay. I'm excited. Okay, sounds and, good. Yep. Sounds so good. hopefully he'll be graduated. I think he told me in December. Okay. So, you know, you always have one that's very driven and one that takes the Don't road less traveled. I got you. <laughs> I have that. I got yeah, you. Yeah, but got they're great kids. So I know you got a couple of hobbies that I just love. You want to share okay. one of them? So um, way, way, way back. So uh, when I was probably in about fifth or sixth grade, okay. my parents decided that my brother and I needed to leave the house for the summer because, you know, we were heathens. <laughs> <laughs> getting into stuff right, so they right. sent us to summer camp right and one of the hobbies that I picked up at summer camp I picked up three hobbies swimming mm -hmm. horseback riding and archery awesome. and the one thing that stuck was archery okay so from the time I was around 11 12 years old up until probably my 30s or 40s I was always in archery wow. I have gear I have targets that's um, awesome. And it's fun, it, awesome. and so I do it as a stress reliever. Okay. But as I moved around the country, not every place has a place for you to, to gotcha. practice the craft. And gotcha. so sometimes you can go to parks that'll have events, mm -hmm. but it's a weapon. So you have okay. to be careful about Absolutely. where you shoot and, and Absolutely. you know, Absolutely. if you miss your target, where's your arrow going Absolutely. and how far it's Safety going to go. Is Safety is paramount. For sure. For sure. And so, um, then I started having some shoulder issues with pulling back the bow mm -hmm. and the string. And so I thought, hmm, what else could I do <laughs> with this talent? <laughs> and I took up small arms. Okay. And so currently I own a few weapons. Okay. Um, okay. I have to get them registered and all that in, in okay. Maryland, of course, okay. because I have a concealed carry permit. But Maryland is, doesn't, is not a reciprocity That's state. That's true. That's true. And That's so, true. you know, I'm That's going true. through that process now. Okay. But um, there's, you know, places that I can go Absolutely. and, and Absolutely. target practice indoor. I'm not into hunting. I like the fact that my okay. meat comes in a nice little styrofoam <laughs> tray with plastic around it. Okay. And this is 85, you know, 15, I chuck, whatever. I like that. I got you. Um, I got steak you. and what have you. I'm I not looking you. to hunt anything. Yeah, okay. I'm not looking to dress any okay. meat. I got so, you. and then my other hobby that is less violent. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> is I like to read and I like to shop. So okay. um, I have I a general know. shop. Shop. Oh my gosh. Shopping can be <laughs> up between those two, yeah. but that's another show. I have a general rule, and, and my <laughs> boss Don Lindsay will tell you when it comes time to go to conferences, I want to know where they are, and I immediately scope out how far is the mall from the conference. That's important. Because to me it's critical. Because right. if it's too far and I got to right. pay a bunch of Uber or taxi money, right. I'm not going to it's the conference. Not worth it. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> All right. So awesome. So as the chief diversity officer, mm -hmm. tell, tell the folks what that means. I think folks see, they hear the word diversity and inclusion and these words that we're toying around with. But what is what you do as a chief diversity officer? What's that look like every day? Okay. So um, let me just start off by saying that doing diversity work or being a chief diversity officer is different everywhere you go. Okay. So this is not my first time being a diversity officer. Okay. Um, part of the work is one that you have to love people and you have to love process and mm. you have to be a strategic thinker. Okay. Because People want to hear the word diversity and think black, white, that's and right. that you're dealing with just race matters. That's right. And that's not all that we do. Right. It's a topic of interest or concern, but it is not the depth and breadth of the work that we do. Okay. We're really cultural architects, and so we look at I what's like that. yeah, we I look like at what's that. going on in our community, what's going on in the larger world, what is going mm -hmm. on in the college, and try to be strategic about services, resources, okay. opportunities. Where do we recruit? How do we retain students? How do we recruit and retain faculty and staff? Um, are we putting our money where we mm -hmm. where our mouth is on some of our processes right, and right, projects right. and initiatives? <clears throat> and so it's kind of overarching. Okay. Um, I report directly to the president, uh, Dawn Lindsay. She's a lovely person. She's awesome. Yeah. She, she, kudos to her <laughs> and what she does every day. Yeah, and she allows me to have um, 
autonomy in some of the things that I do, but also a listening ear and a place that I can go back and kind of do a check okay. and say, you know, my head is telling me this, but my gut feels like this okay. and someone to talk to. And she's been at the college a while, okay. so she knows the ins and outs and the mm -hmm. folks. We are serious at AACC about diversity. Okay. It is part of our um, values, mm -hmm. diversity and inclusion. It is part of our mission. Mm -hmm. It is part of our strategic plan. Awesome. So it's not a word that we use just to sprinkle because it's the, the word of the day or right. the catchphrase. Right. We truly mean what are people bringing to the table? What do we need to be aware of? Awesome. We're covering um, disability. We're covering English as a second language. Okay. We're covering people that are on the spectrum. Okay. Religion, we have to be respectful of. You know, when we're having meetings, you don't want to have a meeting during Ramadan where people are bringing in sure, food because sure. that's disrespectful. Sure, you sure. don't want to have meetings or um, situations that we're meeting during the Jewish high holidays okay. because that's a whole segment of society that we're cutting out from okay. having an opportunity. And so, this crossed the line, not to cut you, I just want no, to jump good. in. This crosses the line of staff as well into the student it's life everyone. as well. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's when, we're, when you're talking and doing what you do, it's the campus, it's it the, the environment. Campus as yes. a whole yes. okay okay you know programs and initiatives for faculty staff and students sure right now in our current cl um, political climate civility seems to be yeah. top of mind for people okay and one of the things that we try to do or that I try to do at the college is you know keep a civil mind keep mm -hmm. a civil tongue mm -hmm. but help people navigate what's going on okay. way fine and understand okay so uh, we're gonna keep this going yep. this is perfect so what can the community do better to let young people, what really not even young people, people wanting to go to college, wanting to further their education, what can we do better as a community? And where I'm really going with that, there used to be a stigmatism where somebody would graduate and they would say, oh, I'm going to community college. And it almost sounded like, oh, you just go into community college. Mm -hmm. But our community college ranks like yeah, we're the top three, top, top three mm -hmm. in the country, right? Mm -hmm. So what are some things as a community we can do better to get that word out to our age as well as young people that right. the college is there and open for business? Um, a number of things come to mind. Number one, if I am a high school student, okay. dual college enrollment so that you can take some of your college credits at a very, very reduced, almost free, not mm. quite, but close, free and get those college credits behind you that will transfer into a college that you want to go to. Okay. So you get that behind you. Okay. So from a college student, I mean from a high school student's perspective, mm -hmm. you need to look at the dual dual credit okay. as, as an opportunity. Because okay. you're taking college credits, sure, but sure. you get the high school credit sure. and the college credit. As a parent, um, recognizing the value that a community college offers, okay. and I do mean value as in dollars, okay. we're far more um, reasonably, reasonably priced okay. and less expensive okay. than four years at all. Um, and there's an opportunity where you can come in and get the first two years of college or even three years in some cases under your belt and then transfer over okay. to the University of Maryland or sure. Baltimore's or sure. wherever you're going. Or Bowie State. The Bowie State, I'm just Morgan, saying. Coppin, yep, all of those. Right. There's, there's that opportunity. And we have transfer articulation right. agreements. But from, you know, from a financial standpoint, mm -hmm. I've got two kids that have gone through, one that's still in college and one that's out. Okay. And, you know, and I look at student loans and you know how much money they're going to be in debt, how much money I'm in mm -hmm. debt trying to help them mm. you know I'm mean, like you know how you stand in the gap well oh, financially yeah. parents yeah, end up standing in the yeah, gap yeah. so there's a monetary value to okay. a community college okay. and then to the community oh and you know just everyone we offer programs okay. from we have a child development center so you need some place to, for daycare for your kids. Really? So you know, you're almost talking not quite zero, but close to zero to 90 wow. that we educate in the community. Wow. We have programs awesome. for everyone. Everybody. Yeah, okay. so what is it that you want to do? What is it that you think you want to do? Okay. Our certification programs and to get cert certificates mm -hmm. for various and sundry different um, opportunities that are workforce development okay. type. Mm -hmm. we, have, we run the gamut. I, I think Today I was at a meeting and we have like 245 different programs. Awesome. And okay. so there's okay. something for everyone. For everybody. Um, 
what if you wanted to learn how to bake a cake? We've got that. Sure, you want sure. to learn how to you know, change a tire on a car? We've we got, got that. that. Okay. You need an English degree? We got, we got that. that. Okay. <laughs> so that's a good segue. So you use the word, um, your strategic plan, mm -hmm. and you all sound like you're long-term thinkers. Yes. So what are some things that the college might be doing in the community that the people that we're talking about maybe can attach themselves to to get better educated on the college? Are there sure. any activities? Oh, let's see where to stop. It's, it's almost yeah, just, easier just for you few. to tell, tell yeah. you what we're not doing because we're, okay. we're doing so okay. much. Um, our foundation is really making inroads with donors and folks that want to be mm -hmm. part of the college, maybe leave a legacy of some sure, sort. So sure. there's opportunity there. Okay. Scholarships come out of our foundation. Okay. We have students just like any other college or university that you would come across that students have needs, mm -hmm. but we also have students that are just rocking it out on GPA, mm -hmm. and we'd like to reward them for that sure, because they're sure, keeping their GPAs sure. up. So scholarship opportunities, you could have one named after yourself. We could do the Derek Matthews, you know, <laughs> public service. Okay, you know, we'll talk about that off, off the yeah, set, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, we are in community doing um, so many things. Just this past weekend, we were at the Kunta Kente Festival, okay. so we support a lot of the festivals awesome. Awesome. and opportunities that are in the, in the county. We also partner with um, businesses so that our students have some place to intern okay. um, or extern, depending on how you yeah, so Internships okay. and externships are, are key <clears throat> to, for people to say, mm -hmm. hey, I have this skill. Mm -hmm. Let me see you know, how mm -hmm. we're doing. How am I doing? How mm -hmm. do I measure up? And then having a, that resume booster, mm -hmm. you, you can't beat that. What else are we doing? Oh my gosh, we sit on a lot of different boards. Okay. We have a wonderful board of trustees that really lets the college kind of flex and fly where it needs okay. to. Okay. Um, our programs, you can't beat the, the programs that we offer. Okay. Our faculty and staff. So we have a, a unique opportunity where if you are a faculty or staff member at the college and you have a master's degree, mm -hmm. we have a program, it's called, it's kind of like a freshman orientation program, mm -hmm. it's called ACA 100. You can teach in that program. Wow. Yeah, you can't teach it during your work hours, so you okay. can teach it you know, before or after. Okay. But it's an opportunity to really touch students and meet them wow. where they are when awesome. they come into the college. So opportunities just abound. We have faculty and staff that um, go into the high schools. Mm -hmm. Mead is coming to mind, mm -hmm. where our cybersecurity and, and um, <coughs> pardon me, criminal mm -hmm. justice faculty go in okay. and work with those students to get into the programs. Okay, awesome, okay. All right, so y'all are busy. So, We're very busy. so we'll direct them to the to the site to the college yeah, site afterwards after the show. Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead, say it again. AACC.edu. Edu. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, sounds good. So I gotta ask you this. So as a uh, as a black woman, mm -hmm. and you have done well for yourself both in your profession, education. You've raised two incredible children. What are some things that you did for some of the viewers that maybe want to strive to be you? Mm -hmm. What are some things that you stayed focused on that kept you kept you where you needed to be to where you are now? You some, know, that's a really pointers. good question. Mm -hmm. So I'm not necessarily a follower. Mm. So that was key for me for a number of reasons. Um, I have knucklehead friends, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you can call it that, and I would watch them do things. Mm -hmm. And some other people that I was aware of, and I'm thinking, mm, that's not a road for me. So I was okay. always looking for other opportunities. Okay. I have to admit, when I was younger, I was always looking for the easy way. Okay. You know, how do I do this sure. and do it easier sure. and not make life difficult for myself? Mm -hmm. And by doing that, I kind of, you know, blazed my own trails mm -hmm. in some, some mm -hmm. degree because I did something different than everyone else mm -hmm. was doing. Mm -hmm. um, stayed focused on the fact that I did not want to um, be a burden to my parents, a mm -hmm. burden to if I was going to get married, have kids, to my kids. Okay. So how did I make my own? And I... My husband will tell you, there's only one boss of Deidre, and it's Deidre. Mm, okay. <laughs> so in order okay. to stay my own boss, you know, I had to do some things. I okay. had to go to school. And I, I don't necessarily recommend what I've done um, to get education, but I, got my, I graduated from high school, immediately went to college. Okay. I knew that going straight from high school to college was a bad idea, but everybody else was doing it. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, let me do this too. And I struggled. I got put out my freshman year. After freshman year, they're like, thank you, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll see you another day. 
wow. when you get yourself together. Okay. And okay. I had to sit out. And okay. that for me was embarrassing and I, you know, and I didn't want to tell my parents. So I was one of those people that got up, okay. went to work. So I changed my work schedule. So I worked during the day. My parents didn't know I was kicked out and I was working full time. Okay. And then when I got back in school is mm -hmm. when I told my parents I had been put out of school okay. and they were like, what? are you doing? Mm -hmm. But I was more focused then. You mm -hmm. know, sometimes you need a kick in the pants. Sure, sure, sure. And then I thought, I hate school. I, hate, I When I get out of here, I'm never going back. So then 10 years later, I went back and got my master's okay. degree because I saw a means to an end okay. that I needed an advanced degree in order to do some of the things that I wanted to do, primarily take care of myself. Right. And by now I've got kids and I'm thinking, oh, you know what, I need to make the life a little bit easier for mm -hmm. them. So while I was focused on making life easier for myself, then I had to refocus on how to make right. life easier for my kids okay. so that they don't have the hurdles. And then I thought, I'm never going to school again as long as I shall live. Ten years later, I went back and got my doctorate. Wow. So I'm not saying that you should be on the 30-year plan, okay. but you got to have a goal. You okay. got to be focused. And I okay. think that was, was what was key for me okay. that... Every so often, I would look at my life and say, where's your goal, what's your focus, and how are you going to get there? Okay. And I would do okay. that. All right. So, well, listen, that was a lot, and I, oh, I'm going to have to get, no, that's okay. <laughs> no, that was good. Um, and this is why I wanted you here today, because I wanted folks to hear mm -hmm. what our great community college did. And to be ranked top three in the country, I mean, that's, that's a lot. You guys got a lot of work going on up there. And I just want to say, continue to do what you're doing. Um, we're just about out of time, so I'm going to have to get you to come back. Sure. Um, and we are actually classmates now. We are. In our are. leadership, Anne Arundel. That's right. Uh, flagship 2019. <laughs> so we'll be the best class ever, <laughs> right? We are already. Because right, so, you and I are in it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So stay with us. We'll be right back with more Real Talk. I already knew that I was going to go to college, you know, from a young age. I definitely want to major in political science. After that, I'm going to get my law degree. Then I'm going to come back to Detroit, boost the economy, become the mayor or something, try to make the situation better for other people. I feel like I owe it to the city. I'm determined. It's, it, it's going to happen. My name is Justin, and I am your dividend. Welcome back. I also want to give a shout out to the planning team of the Kunta Kinte Festival. What another success this year as the festival not only had an incredible outpouring of, of guests and, and, and seekers willing to find out how, what this festival is really like, but the weather stood steadfast and they had a great day. Words of self-inspiration for this episode. I want to tell you today, today is not just an ordinary day. Today is a day that matters. Today, you will have the choice to make a difference in your life and those around you, so don't waste it. Today, you will have a choice to smile rather than frown, be grateful rather than selfish, lift up rather than put down, accept rather than reject, love rather than hate. Today, you will have the choice of seeking hope for the future or remain in the past of hopelessness of the past. Today, you will have the choice to either laugh or cry. Both will make you feel better. Today, you will have the undivided attention of the creator of the universe. And I suggest you use that time to ask anything that you wanna ask. You can ask for help. You can plead for a friend or a loved one, or just enjoy the presence of peace of mind. It all depends on you. Whichever you choose, today matters. Make the choice, make it a day worth living. And don't forget, tomorrow is another day. We all get knocked down sometimes, but get up, brush yourself off, and keep moving. The dream is free, but the hustle is sold separately. That wraps up this week's edition of Real Talk. You can watch this episode and archive episodes online anytime on Facebook or YouTube or by searching for Rundle TV. Please tune again next time for highlights and news from around the county. I'm Derek Matthews. We'll see you next time with more Real Talk.